So what this video is going to cover is something called noble gas configuration. So it's building on what we already know about electron configurations and how to organize things. Um, but we're going to focus on a shorter way of writing electron configuration called noble gas. So remember the noble gases are in the last column of the periodic table, helium, neon, argon, krypton, so on. They are the last um, column. And they have what we call filled S and P orbitals. So they have an S2 and a P6 is how you see their electron configuration. So because that is a magical number system, meaning eight is a magic number that we're gonna come back to multiple times, we're gonna use the noble gases as kind of a shorthand way of writing out all of the electron configurations. So for this configuration, uh, we are going to use brackets uh, to surround the symbol of the noble gas, and that's going to abbreviate essentially those electrons that are in that configuration, and then anything beyond that, you're going to write it after the bracket. So the noble gas configuration is sometimes found on um, different resources uh, because you don't have to start at 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 for some of the bigger elements, uh, and it's a faster way of writing them and a more important way because they're gonna show us something called valence electrons. So for example, uh, I could abbreviate the 1s2 as helium. Uh, it really doesn't buy me that much. It's pretty easy for me to write 1s2, uh, but technically speaking, I could write helium and then um, the rest of the electrons after that. Where it gets much more interesting is say, for instance, um, when I go down to energy level two, it ends in neon. So if I want to incorporate the first eight, excuse me, 10 electrons, I could just put neon in brackets and then write the following um, electrons, this uh, 3s2, whatever it comes after that, um, and speeds up the process. And then the other example I'm going to show you, and you can continue to go down, if I had a, a total of 18 electrons, uh, or something beyond 18 electrons, I could use argon, because again, it's going to represent the second energy level and the third energy level, and then you're gonna guard it into the fourth energy level. So um, noble gas configurations, I wanna show you a couple examples and then show you why it is so effective or why it's useful uh, for um, chemists uh, to use this. So let's say we did the electron configuration of aluminum. So instead of starting at 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, Again, aluminum is in that third row, okay? So what I do is I go to the row above it and I see neon, that's gonna take care of my first 10 electrons, first 10 electrons, and then I'm gonna go down to the 3s and then the 3p. So then I have neon, 3s2, 3p1. So all we care about as chemists is what we call the valence electrons. So these are the valence electrons for aluminum. There are a total of three valence electrons for aluminum. That is going to dictate a lot of its chemistry, what it wants to do. And one thing aluminum wants to do is it wants to become a cation. It wants to become a three plus ion. Well, where are those electrons gonna come from? Well, one of them is gonna come from the 3P and two of them are gonna come from the 3S. So when you write the configuration of some of these ions, you're gonna see that it's the configuration of the noble gases. That is why they do what they do. That is why aluminum loses three. It's much easier for it to what we call complete its octet, complete eight electrons. Instead of gaining five electrons, it's much easier for it to lose three electrons. So it becomes neon as a electron configuration. It's still aluminum and it still has 13 protons, but the electrons are in the same configuration as neon. All right, so see if you could write iron's electron configuration with noble gas and then see if you could do iodide. So I'm gonna pause the video and when I uh, start the video back up, you're going to see the answer. So again, try Fe and then I, see if you could write its uh, noble gas configuration. So the electron configuration with noble gas for iron would be argon 4S23D6. Again, iron is in the middle of the D block, uh, you're going to end it in, um, excuse me, the row above it is going to end in argon. So you always go to the row above it. So that takes care of the first 18 electrons. Then you do the 4s2, then you do the 3d6. Okay. So these are what we call its outermost electrons. The 4s2 
um, is the higher energy state. So this is where the electrons are going to come out first if it becomes an ion. Um, so this is, uh, if I had an Fe2+, plus, I would lose the electrons from that 4s before I start taking it out of the 3d. So it actually write as argon 3d6. So going a little bit beyond what we're talking about, but it kind of gives you at least a perspective of what we're doing there. So again, the 4s is going to be where the electrons come out first. Then iodine, this one is where it becomes really helpful. Iodine is way down here, number 53. So you go to the row above it, that is krypton, then you go across. So it's 5s2, then it goes 4d10, then it ends up as 5p5. Okay, so it keeps um, you from um, writing out all of the electron configuration, especially when you get further and further down on the periodic table. Now, for this particular one, realize that the valence electrons for iodine is going to be the fifth energy level, okay? So that's a higher energy state than the 4D. So that means I would have a total of seven valence electrons in iodide, um, and that's going to be why it makes the ion that it does, because if it is a P5, it only needs one more electron to become the magic eight. So that is why iodine is a negative one charge when it becomes an ion. So it becomes a P6, but in terms of noble gas configuration, it becomes xenon, it becomes xenon. So again, trying to give you at least some perspective of how this is all going to play out. So a couple more ions, okay, to kind of um, reiterate or show you why the noble gas configuration is so very valuable. So if I look at F minus, okay, if I just write the electron configuration of fluorine, just normal fluorine, it would be helium. Again, that doesn't buy me much. And then it is 2s22p5. So what you're gonna hopefully start to see the pattern is the fact that fluorine only wants one more electron to become a P6. So I could write its configuration as helium 2s22p6, or I could just call it neon, okay? So I do sometimes like to show that just so you could see where the electron went, essentially, instead of just jumping to neon. Uh, but technically speaking, you could say it has the same configuration as neon because it does, because it does. And likewise with sodium, we've done sodium a couple different times. Sodium ion, sodium itself is neon, 3s1, just to show you the perspective of a cation. So this is your anion, this is a cation. So again, this is going to lose one electron when it becomes Na+, plus, when it becomes Na+, plus, so it's going to become neon. Okay, essentially I've lost the 3s1 electron and that is where it's gonna come from in the fact that it's the highest energy state. So that's gonna be where the electron comes off of. So that kind of summarizes how you're going to use the noble gas configuration. And if you look at, your Flynn periodic table, okay? Your Flynn periodic table has the noble gas configuration in the top right corner. So you could easily pull out a normal periodic table and see if you could write the noble gas configuration and check yourself on the Flynn periodic table.